a dialogue, a, uh, a civil courteous dialogue uh, to make sure that we respect uh, all of our diverse opinions. Um, yeah, some applause for that. And, uh, uh, and, and you know, I, I, I want to hear you know, what's on your minds. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll have more of a conversation rather than me doing all the talking. Uh, but I, I did just want to start off uh, by um, signaling that I, I, I just want to give an overview of uh, you know, some of the big topics that, that have been happening in Sacramento at your state capitol. And I specifically wanted to touch upon uh, the state budget, on public education, and on public safety. And then I'll open up for questions, comments, concerns, and uh, we can uh, start <coughs> mixing it up. Um, let me first uh, start by saying that uh, you know, it's, it's been a real honor for me to uh, represent Hermosa Beach uh, uh, in the California legislature. This is my 10th year representing Hermosa Beach. And uh, you know, on, on uh, uh, this day, like whenever I, I represent, when people talk about or you know, realize that I represent Hermosa Beach in the California legislature, you know, they, they, they think, oh my gosh, you, know, it's, you're, 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 you, know, you represent such a beautiful community. You know, it's, it's much cooler in Hermosa compared to most of the rest of the state of California. Uh, and, um, and so I, I, I want to emphasize that people, you know, when, it, when I tell them that I represent Hermosa Beach, they immediately recognize that uh, I, rep I represent some of the, you know, the, the nicest parts of our beautiful state. <coughs> I wanted to start off by talk, talking about this, uh, you know, the latest great California story that, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, has been unfolding, uh, uh, a lot has been in the news uh, in this past week, uh, which is uh, the story of our most recent company in the state of California that has become the world's most valuable company. You may have heard about it, especially if you're in the stock market, uh, but it's a company called NVIDIA. And uh, NVIDIA uh, is the latest California uh, dream story. Uh, it's, it's about a gentleman named Jensen Huang, a immigrant from Taiwan uh, who was a busboy at a Denny's in East San Jose. He started this company with uh, three of his friends uh, at, um, you know, over dinner at the Denny's in East San Jose. And, uh, you know, they, they started as a gaming company, uh, but then they figured out that they can use uh, some of the, 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 the chip technology that they've been working on for games in order to, to make it work for what is expected to be you know, the next big wave in innovation and, and technology, uh, which is artificial intelligence. Now I know that uh, AI, artificial intelligence or AI, is, uh, you know, it's got a lot of promise, uh, but it's also raising a lot of concerns uh, about uh, concerns about uh, you know, whether it's going to take jobs, whether it's going to, uh, you know, lead to the extension of humankind. I know that some people have been talking about that. But I wanted to start off by talking about the story because, you know, California continues to be the center of innovation, not only in the entire country, but in the entire world. And that, you know, I was looking at the, uh, the list of the world's uh, you know, most valuable companies as measured by uh, market capitalization. You know, I, I believe six of the top 10 in the world, in the entire world, are right here in the state of California. And, and that's really something, you know, to, to, to think about in terms of how uh, California, you know, continues to uh, attract you know, many of the best uh, minds, most innovative minds uh, all around the world to our great state uh, and, and uh, and, and, and that we continue to lead, uh, especially in the areas of innovation. I want to use that to segue into one of my top priorities, which is education. Because we know that the reason why we are the home of the innovation economy right here in the state of California uh, is because we have you know, uh, the world's greatest uh, public and private universities. Uh, it's no accident that we have Silicon Valley right here in the state of California. It is the home of many of our, our best universities in the world that are training the workforce, that are training the innovative minds 
that uh, are attracting this and, and creating this critical mass of, um, of talent uh, in uh, Silicon Valley, as well as, you know, we're, we're hoping to grow it in other parts of the state. We're, we've been uh, working on trying to uh, uh, incubate and grow uh, Silicon Beach uh, and to bring it further down to the, to the South Bay. So uh, education is, is my top priority. I'm a, a, a parent of a, of a high public high school kid. I'm a, a former Torrance School Board member, and I'm currently serving as chair of the uh, Assembly Education Committee. And so as uh, a champion for education, champion for our schools, um, one of my top priorities, the top priority this year for me was the budget and protecting uh, K-12 spending uh, and the state budget. Many of you may be hearing in the news about how the state of California has uh, been facing a, a daunting budget deficit this year. And um, you know, we're, we've already had to make uh, some significant uh, cuts uh, in other areas of the state budget. Um, but uh, I, I'm proud to say that we have, we have protected K-12 uh, funding despite uh, this, uh, this massive budget deficit that we we're facing uh, from, from the beginning of the year. Um, that uh, we're, we're not only uh, uh, going to uh, you know, be able to give a, a modest uh, cost of living increase to the K-12 uh, budget, uh, so that that ultimately translates you know, into uh, what uh, Maggie and the Hermosa School District works hard on, uh, to uh, make sure that class sizes are small, to, to, to make sure that there are the uh, academic support services uh, for, for the kids that need it. You know, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, the academic support or, or whether it's addressing one of the, uh, the biggest uh, challenges facing our youth right now, which, which is uh, uh, the youth mental health crisis. You know, I, I'm really happy to see Amanda with the ALCO program, uh, sponsored by the Beach City Health District. And, uh, I, I asked Amanda if she can give an up, update later on about, the, about um, you know, what ALCO has been up to. Um, but uh, it, it, it's so critical. You know, uh, Beach City's Health District has, has conducted a, a youth mental health survey of, of our, especially our teenagers in the Beach Cities. And, uh, the, the numbers are really alarming. It's, it's, it's really a concern, um, uh, you know, with uh, especially teenage girls. You know, I, I think some of you may, may have seen uh, some of the headlines. Uh, New York Times, I think they had a headline last year that two out of five teenage girls, you know, uh, suffer anxiety and depression. Um, and many of them, you know, had uh, uh, contemplated suicide. And, um, you know, a, a lot of that, uh, there, there's growing consensus, growing recognition that a lot of that is tied to what I started talking about, high tech, uh, and, and specifically, um, you know, uh, uh, too much time being spent on social media. Uh, I'm, I'm proud that I, I, I was the first in the California legislature to, to introduce a bill to uh, call upon school districts to, uh, to set reasonable limits on uh, the use and access to smartphones uh, on school grounds during school hours, because you know we uh, there's, there's growing data uh, showing that uh, that excessive use of uh, social media and specifically on smartphones uh, is a big part of what's causing this youth mental health crisis. Um, and so we are continuing uh, these efforts to set reasonable limits. Of course, you know we want to be able to. Uh, for students to be able to use their phones in emergency uh, situations, we want them to be able to use it for you know, teacher-approved uh, academic purposes to support their education. Um, but I think, um, yeah, one of my favorite stories actually, uh, it was in Manhattan Beach, in neighboring Manhattan Beach, uh, where uh, you know it was the lunch hour uh, a, a couple years. No, it was right when Manhattan Beach Middle School started this. Uh, this uh, smartphone uh, restriction policy on campus where they, they didn't want, uh, they, they uh, uh, were restricting students from using their smartphones during the lunch hour, and, uh, you know, uh, on, on, on school grounds during the school hours. And um, the teachers, you know, they, they were gathered in the, the lunch room or the staff room and they said, what's that noise, you know? And they realized that the noise was the sound of kids talking to each other. You know, rather than looking at their phones. 
And so, uh, uh, I, I think that's just you know one of, of, of many examples of, of, of how uh, we need to you know like with any technology, with any new innovation, we need to make sure that we're uh, striking that balance uh, between what's good for our kids, what's good for our, uh, our, our, our Californians, uh, while at the same time uh, embracing the potential for, for technology to be able to enhance you know our, our the quality of our, of our lives. Um, moving on to uh, some other uh, things that I've been working on in, in the education space. As chair of the Assembly Education Committee, uh, I'm the lead author of a uh, statewide school bond measure um, that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the best deal for every uh, community uh, throughout the state of California. It is providing matching dollars uh, to every school district that uh, is engaged in a school improvement uh, uh, process. Um, uh, Maggie, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I know you have. Uh, Hermosa has been uh, and, re and renovating all of your school facilities, uh, uh, but uh, you're you're in the middle of a, a yeah, school in, modernization in program. In 2016, uh, Hermosa Beach uh, City passed the $59 million bond. Probably is making too much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure that everyone has uh, you know clean bathrooms and, and, and safe facilities and, and a big part of that is maintenance so uh, absolutely that's that's an important point but uh, am, am I correct in assuming that Hermosa received state matching dollars for the yes we got the million dollars off the last bond account it took us it was about a 10-year wait to get to we first put in our, our name when we got the dollars but those two million dollars went into replacing Okay, great. So, uh, uh, but those state bond dollars are running out. Uh, the last time we passed a statewide school bond was in twenty, yeah, uh, it was in twenty sixteen, uh, and so it is time for us to pass a statewide school bond to provide matching dollars to local school districts, where local school districts, you know, define your priorities, not Sacramento, and and with the local school districts having the oversight over. Facilities. Um, before I go any further, I, I want to acknowledge uh, uh, your Hermosa City Manager, Susan Lowenthal. Uh, thank you very much. For <laughs> and thank you, thank you again for allowing us to use your city hall and uh, your your facilities here to host this town hall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, let me move on then to, to uh, another issue um, that I want to touch upon before I open up for, for our conversation, uh, which is public safety. So um, there is, uh, well first of all, let me emphasize that, uh, uh, that I'm a former prosecutor uh, and, and that uh, you know, I have, uh, I have always raised my concerns uh, about um, how we need to strike a balance uh, in our uh, public safety laws uh, between uh, holding criminals accountable, uh, keeping our streets and our communities safe, uh, while at the same time 
learning from our past experience where we were spending so much on our prisons and our jails that uh, we were spending more on prisons than we were on our public higher education system, on our University of California and our California State Universities, for example. And I think, uh, you know, wh whether you agree with that or not, uh, you know, that is my position. I, I, I believe that we need to, to have a balanced approach. And I, I believe that in, in recent years, uh, we have lost that balance. And so I have been working to try to restore that balance uh, between holding criminals accountable, especially repeat offenders, especially in the space of retail theft. Uh, I know that there's, there's growing concerns about, about uh, all of the, the viral smash and grab videos that we see on, on retail theft. Uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, if, if drug addiction is, is the underlying problem that's leading to, you know, the, the, the theft activity, then we need to address the core issues. You know, if, it, if it's drug addiction, if it's mental health issues, uh, you know, if, if, if it's housing, if it's employment, you know, I believe that we need to be smart about how we're addressing the root causes of these crimes. And so I, I think it's a balancing act. There is a active uh, debate that is happening right now uh, on whether or not to uh, amend Proposition 47. Uh, proposition 47, as many of you may know, it was a, a statewide proposition that 60% uh, of California voters passed in 2014. Uh, it was not a measure that was passed by the California legislature passed by California voters. Um, and it was a, a measure that lowered uh, many uh, uh, drug and, uh, and, and uh, property theft crimes from a felony to a misdemeanor. Uh, I have been introducing bills uh, in, 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 you know, ever since my time in the, in the legislature to try to amend Proposition 47. You know, like this year, I reintroduced uh, for the third time a bill to give courts and prosecutors the option of being able to uh, file as a felony or as a misdemeanor when you have uh, your, your third theft uh, conviction. That is one of the proposals in the statewide proposition and, and that obviously given that I have uh, I, I've been working on this trying to get this uh, uh, passed in the legislature you know but uh, my bills have been voted down. Um, that is why the retailers, you know, turn to the prop, the ballot proposition process. To, you know, to uh, given that the legislature uh, was not passing uh, uh, many of these these uh, reforms, uh, they're trying to go straight to the, the voters. So there is an active uh, debate going on now. The governor is trying to uh, uh, convince the retailers to to uh, to to uh, withdraw the ballot proposition in exchange for, uh, for a package of bills that the legislature has uh, uh, been moving forward. Um, um, and, and so I, 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 I did want to highlight that that is uh, uh, part of the big conversation taking place in public safety. Obviously, you know, homelessness is also a, a you know, tied to the uh, concerns about public safety. Um, Clearly, uh, you know the homeless crisis, uh, you know, continues to uh, to be one of our, our biggest challenges. Uh, you know, why is it that the uh, nation's wealthiest state, the world's fifth largest economy, um, you know, has the largest homeless population? I mean, it's it's complicated, but uh, but the but the but the experts, the policy experts, you know, are well, I'll tell you that the number one cause of homelessness is the cost of housing. It's the number one reason why people are leaving the state of California. It's the number one reason why we have the largest homeless population. It's the cost of housing. It's, it's people are, you know, one job loss or one illness from, uh, from missing their rent payment uh, uh, and, and, and falling into you know, living in their cars, living in their, their RVs, too often when you combine that with 
drug addiction, and mental health issues, too many end up living on the streets. So I, I, I know that uh, uh, I, I've been uh, working more um, with Redondo. I'm not sure what uh, Hermosa is doing in terms of many of their efforts uh, in addressing the, the homeless uh, uh, crisis. Uh, Redondo has done a lot of really innovative programs, um, uh, two of which I would highlight. Uh, what One is their they have a homeless court where you know a, a lot of the, the the crimes committed by the homeless are like really low level you know what a, a lot of uh, law enforcement officers and prosecutors call quality of life uh, uh, offenses you know uh, urinating in public uh, camping in public uh, 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 public intoxication uh, uh, just to give you an idea um, and, and so what, what Redondo's been doing is um, basically rather than uh, criminalizing poverty, criminalizing people for being poor, they're using the uh, criminal process to, uh, to the, the criminal court system to intervene uh, in, in, in these people's lives and, and provide the support services to try, again, to try to get at the root causes of their, 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 their um, Criminal activity. So, if, if it's homelessness, you know, there are, there are housing navigators provided on site to try to to, to place them into uh, into shelters or permanent housing if it's available. If it's mental health, they provide mental health services. If it's drug addiction, they provide drug addiction treatment. Um, so that's one thing that, that that Redondo has been championing. I, I I've been trying to take that statewide, uh, but you know. Been facing the budget challenges, the basic issue is money. Uh, but I would love to see more communities participate in these homeless court programs. It's an ask Redondo. Their homeless numbers have gone down, and uh, and uh, it's been a, a very effective uh, program. Another uh, uh, very effective uh, effort that they've engaged in uh, is they, they, they have a homeless um, a, a homeless outreach coordinator, uh, amazing woman. Uh, uh, Lilo Mora Garcia, uh, who we uh, I you know, honored her as our South Bay Woman of the Year um, at the recent uh, homelessness uh, town hall that we had. Um, but you know, I, I went on a ride along with her, and and, and she would like uh, she would know every single homeless person in Redondo <coughs> by name. You know, she would she would be driving around, and, and she'll see someone, and she'll whip the car around and, and say, Hey, you know, I, I you know, you know, how, how are you doing? I I I I know that you know you're. You're third on the waiting list on getting that, that housing voucher, and, and you know, and uh, and, and, and and the uh, you know the, the, the person would be so thankful. Uh, you know, thank you so much, Lila. She she's like she's like a like a angel, you know, like like a, 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 a angel driving around in, in Redondo. And, and and so I I, I hope I, I would love to learn more about. Uh, I, sh I should know more about what Hermosa is doing. I would love to learn. Um, So yeah, okay, so um, those are, that's an overview of uh, some of the uh, issues.